Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. Today in Dave's Garage, we're going to look at how to combine C and assembly language in the same project in separate files rather than using inline assembly to show you how it's done. We're going to do it with a 6502 and a Kim 1, keeping things as simple as possible so we can focus on the details of the C and assembly integration. Let's take a quick look at the code just in the main function to see what it's going to do, what it looks like when it does it, and then we'll jump into the code and have a look at how. This is our main function, and all it does is clears the screen, prints a text banner, and then prints the numbers from 0 to 9,999, which will, of course, force the screen to scroll, so it tests not only our clearing screen, but also our text output, our cursor management, and finally our scrolling of the screen. I initially wrote it all in C, and it worked, but the scrolling was abysmally slow. Even if you're using memmove as opposed to memcopy, because memcopy can't handle overlapping regions. But if you're using memmove, you assume that that's probably written in assembly in the runtime, but it's still going to be a very generic solution. We can do better with an optimized one for this particular problem. Let's start by looking at the code to clear screen. We can see it called here, but up at the top of the file, it's simply declared as an external. So where does it come from? Well, we're going to write it in assembly language and use the linker to merge the C and the assembly language together. The assembly starts with two export statements. It's going to export two functions from this code to make them available to other people to link to in the project. One is clear screen and the other is scroll screen. Our screen memory is located at A000 and that can be changed just by changing the constant in the code in case you rejump or your board to have the video memory live somewhere else. But in this case, it runs from A000 to BFFF. That's going to give you just shy of 8K, 8,000 bytes of screen memory. Now to clear the screen, all we're going to have to do is store zero in all of the screen memory, and that will have the effect of blanking the screen. To do that, we start our destination pointer as A000, which is the top left corner of the screen. We're then going to, in a loop, write 255 bytes at a time in a loop, actually 256, and we'll do that as long as the Y register doesn't overflow back to zero. When it does, we then do two things. We increment the high byte of the pointer, and then we check to see if the high byte has hit BFFF. For every page of memory, which is 256 bytes, we use the Y register to dereference off of the base pointer and store a zero in all of those 256 bytes. Once we've done 256 and the Y register overflows, we're going to increment the high byte of the pointer itself. And when we've done that, we're going to check to see if it's now hit 20 past the high byte version of the screen pointer. So when it gets to C000, it will stop. One curiosity of the CA65 assembler, which is handy, is that it supports local labels. You can put a colon, and then later, if you want to branch back to that colon, you branch to colon minus. If you want to branch ahead to the next colon, it's colon plus. If you want to branch two colons ahead, you're going to need a label. This highlighted section is the innermost part of the loop, and this is where it stores the 256 bytes of zeros off of the base pointer. Then, as we can see, it falls through to increment and test the upper byte of the 16-bit pointer to see if it's hit the end of screen memory yet. When it's hit C000, which is 20 past A000, then we know that we're done. At that point, the screen is cleared, and that's all there is to it. This is much faster than the C runtime version that I was using previously. You'll notice I've prefaced the name with an underscore. That's because of a process called name mangling. Now, it's much simpler in C, and when you have no arguments, it's a simple change to the function name to simply put an underscore in front of it. When the linker goes to look for the function to match, it's going to add an underscore at the beginning as part of its name mangling process. This name mangling, which, as I mentioned, gets really complicated in C++ when you've got arguments and class names and everything else. It becomes largely unreadable, and you need a tool to create them. But in the simple assembly language version that we're doing here, all it's going to do is add an underscore. So we know that when we call clear screen, it's really going to try to call the assembler function called underscore clear screen. And that's why we export it with that name. Let's go back to the C version for a moment to see how it calls it. As you can see, we don't put the underscore here. We simply call it clear screen because the linker will take care of that for us. And similarly, when we call it, we simply call clear screen. So when the code is compiled, it's going to put in a stub that says jump to the clear screen call. The linker is going to have to figure out where is that. And so we're going to do two passes here. We're going to first compile the C code to an object file, and then we're going to assemble the assembly to an object file. Then we're going to use the linker to build them into one. In fact, because of the way the CC65 compiler works, I can do it in two steps directly. I simply do the assembly of the assembly code into a .o file and pass that as if it were like a source file to the C compiler. It will know when it gets to the link phase that it has to match these up and link them together. 
It fixes up that address by putting in the real address of wherever ClearScreen actually lives in the code, and it puts in that address to replace the stub. Let's go back and look at the draw text function that we introduced last episode before it did any cursor management. There are simply now two global variables, cursor X and cursor Y, and anything that does text output updates and manages those variables. In this case, we can see here that if cursor Y goes off the bottom of the screen, which we test for by checking it against rows per screen, it's going to set the Y position to be the last line of the screen without moving it horizontally and scroll the screen in place. Again, this is a function that I wrote initially in C because premature optimization is the root of all evil, but when it's as slow as it was, it's time for some optimization. And my optimization in this case was to write it in hand assembly. Let's go have a look at the assembly code to scroll screen. To scroll the screen, what we need to do is to start 320 bytes into the screen memory. That's because every row is 320 pixels wide and every block of characters is eight pixels high. So 320 times eight bits divided by eight bits per byte is 320. So that's how many bytes we start our source into. We then copy everything up one row, 320 bytes prior, and we skip down and we do that for each row of pixels and that will have the effect of scrolling the screen. When we're done, we clear the bottom row of the screen to enter it as a new row. Looking at the code then, we can see it loads the start address of screen plus 320 bytes into the low byte and screen plus 320 bytes into the high byte. It then starts the destination as just screen because that's the destination that we're going to copy to. This inner loop uses the Y register to copy from the source and store it into the destination, increment the Y, and then whenever needed, it checks to see if it's overflowed back to zero, and when it has, it branches, or when it has not, I should say, it branches back to the label. When it does overflow to zero, it falls through. When it falls through, it's going to increment the destination high byte, then it's going to increment the source high byte, check the source high byte to see if it is now at BE. When it is, that means it's copied enough memory so it can stop. To clear the last line of screen text, we need to write 320 bytes of zeros starting at whatever the address of the last line of the screen is. To do that, because we can't index 320 with a single register, I've split it up into two blocks. We're going to copy zeros into screen memory at two offsets, one being 1EA0 and the next one being 1E00. Actually, that's the prior one. And we're going to do it for A0 bytes each, and that will fill the last two lines of the screen. This is kind of unwinding the loop in a way because we're doing two operations per branch instruction. There might be a bug here because I just noticed that I decrement Y and then I branch if it's not zero, which means I probably never do it for the zeroth index, but it looks okay so far. I'll have to check a little more closely. Speaking of which, let's see what the code actually does and how it looks. So the first thing we want to do is invoke the machine language monitor, which is at address E000. So we enter that, then I hit G, I get some garbage before the text syncs up, and here's a list of the menu commands that are in the monitor. From that, we're going to do a disk directory so I can see what's on my little SD card, and we'll enter L to load, and then enter kimgfx.hex, which is the name of the file. We'll watch it load with these little ellipses that are printing out now. That'll take just a few seconds. I think we wind up with like four lines of dots before it's finished. Then I'll press K to get back to the Kim monitor, enter address 2000, which is where I compiled the code to live, and hit G. As soon as I do, you can see it's running on the terminal, and it's going to scroll here nicely. Did everything that we wanted it to, it cleared the screen, printed some text, and it scrolls the screen as it goes. Make files are cryptic and annoying, but we should look at it really quickly just to see how these things get put together into a final project. To compile subs into subs.o, the object file, we put it in the make file and we tell it to assemble subs.asm with an output of subs.o. Then when we go to build kimgraphics.bin, we pass in the subs.o as one of the source files and the linker will know that it has to merge that .object file with the object files that it generates from the C code. It will merge those as the last step, do the link pass and everything will work properly. If you've been enjoying these brief little looks at code that I've been doing of late, please subscribe to the channel so that I know people are interested. In the meantime and in between time, I'll see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage.